I will speak my truth. I will live in authenticity. Those two things do not work together. I don't know how to tell you that. Your truth and living in authenticity, your truth is just your opinion. You cannot live in your opinion about the world and also live authentically. What a disastrous end, but also a glorious end because in essence, it completely flipped and the females were on the attack and the males were the ones that weren't looking as bad. The females came off as vindictive and they grouped together and had kind of a mob mentality and almost came off like they wouldn't accept any responsibility. Now, you know that this whole season, I have just trashed the men. They have not been men. They have had man cards revoked. It's been awful. And I maintain a lot of that. But I do think that it just goes to show that there was a production element and that the females kind of banded together and just had kind of a catty mentality. And now I wonder how much was on camera for the females that they kind of were portraying themselves as a certain way. And now when they're in this different setting, they're like, attack, attack, attack. Again, these shows are very produced, very, very produced. So we know that it's just an interesting element. So before we get into it, make sure you support the channel. Any support I definitely appreciate join or send a super thanks. I definitely appreciate any of that, but if not, at least comment, like subscribe, all of that is much appreciated. We are getting there to a thousand followers. And once we get there, we're going to be doing that live show, man. It just, every week we inch that little bit closer. I'm just, Hmm. I think the goal or not the goal, but I think it's going to be by the time the next season airs and we get a few episodes in, we're going to be at that thousand. So I think my anticipation is that probably during the next season, which has been announced for Chicago, which should be very interesting, but once that new season happens, it's probably going to be somewhere in that season that we're going to be start doing the live show. So it's going to be interesting and I'm looking forward to it. So thank you for the support as always. And let's get into it because it did not disappoint. And I am telling you that in this, Brennan came off not looking as bad and Emily just, woo. If I have, if I had a person that did a complete 180 and sure, could it be because she's hurt? Could it be because she's just on the attack at this point? Yeah, that could have an element to it, but this is having signs of like, I don't know, fatal attraction or something. It's, it's insane how much she's flipped and all of a sudden now she's this cocky, she's this trashing, she's this vindictive. It's, it's kind of insane. And that makes you see that some of that had to be there before. It's not just being hurt. He was wrong. He was controlling in a lot of aspects. And he even went so far as to apologize at one point. Whether it was sincere or not, it seems sincere. Of course, it could be for the cameras. Sure. But the girls could be coming off as... We're going to be strong. We're going to attack back when in reality, their whole excuse was that we did not, we only went along with the boy's plan because we didn't know what to do. And now all of a sudden you're strong enough to speak back. It just doesn't make sense. Like I said before, no one comes off clean on this. There were a lot of issues and no one's innocent. Nobody. I mean, I'm not going to fight. I admit it to you, right? When you saw Australia, and I was like, yes. No, and he you kissed, did not. He kissed me. What, ha only. what happened? What happened? Can you explain? I just want to say it, and then I'm, I'm done. Australian, at a bar. Kiss me. That was it. Okay. All right. <laughs> So what you're telling me is this whole perception of Brennan's the evil guy and, oh, he was going to go on a double date with Cameron, but yet you were at a bar and you kissed an Australian and then you're going to say, but well, he kissed me. That was it. And I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm done. I'm done. That is the biggest cop out. It's, it's trying to be like, I'm going to explain it, but I'm not going to take accountability. I'm not going to take responsibility. He kissed me. I hate to break it to you. Someone kisses you unless you immediately recoil. And why are they that close to you to begin with? Like that whole, but they kissed me. Well, why were you that close for one? For two, I mean, did, did you back up? Not. Nah, you were probably making out with this dude. Who knows if you slept with him? Either way, again, you are not innocent. And it's a cop out. And then to say, and I'm done, and I'm done. And they kind of just let it happen. So it's ridiculous. That's if, how relationships if, work. If you believe that he is making advances on your best friend. Well, I don't want to believe that. And we'll okay. 
<laughs> so the whole thing here was an accusation that he was making, you know, passes or whatever at her best friend. And yet you did this and he was claiming it was a rumor. And then he's like, why didn't you bring it to me? Well, I didn't want to believe it, but you believe it now. This is just coming off as attacking. And, and like, like I said, maybe an element of that is that you're hurt, but it is not becoming of you when you were trying to portray yourself as this happy go lucky person to all the sudden go on the attack because you want to show that you're this strong woman because you went along with this plan and claimed, oh, wait, I don't want to. I'm just going to go along because I don't know what to do. And now all of a sudden you're trying to counter that. It doesn't make sense. Sure, the guys lied at points. Sure, the guys were not good. The females weren't either. This was a just a cluster of a season. And when I see in the comments people saying worst season ever, I mean, if you're talking about a season where love was never the goal, the experts didn't know what they were doing. The people coordinated to do this together to like make an appearance of what they wanted people to see. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Because I wasn't attracted to you and wanted Which to be. Which I honestly don't believe that either, but okay. whatever. <laughs> Mind blown! She has all of a sudden become this extremely cocky person. Like, he's saying, because I wasn't attracted to you. And I said all along, you need to be honest with this the girl. The whole thing with saying that, oh, well, it wouldn't be nice to say these things. Just tell her you're not attracted to her. Stop doing that. You just answer the question there. And uh, no, where, where, up? where? We made out one time. I mean, if you, that makes you sleep at night, sure. Emily. Who wouldn't want to make out with me? I'm sorry. What the holy hell, lady? Do you think that's attractive? Saying, who wouldn't want to make out with me? Guys are going to run for the hills or you're going to get the bar crowd that just wants to sleep with you and you will continue to have this third date crap that you never end up getting past. I'm starting to wonder if this whole, a lot of this was because she used to do, I never got past the third date. She probably slept with the dates. She she said she slept with the dates and had and insinuated she had a bunch of one night stands and then she would leave keeping her in control. She was not in control of the situation. Brennan was the more controlling one. Brennan was the one that was leading it. And Brennan was the one acting like he wasn't attracted to her. And she did not like that. So now she's on the attack because she wasn't in control. This is going to be a problem. It is not going to help her in future relationships. You had a bad relationship. Y'all were not a good match. He did a lot wrong. You are not showing that you are a good match either. Not a good thing. I don't need to say much about her and, and how she is just, I don't know which is the real Emily, but there have to be elements of both to be that little timid person, but also to be that really cocky person. And everything you need to know is said in this next clip. I wanted to say I'm not attracted to you. I don't like you. You're like, you can't do that. God forbid. I'm not attractive. But my hottest guy in the world. I just sit you down and be like, Brennan, I don't think you get this. I'm an 8.5 and you're a 6. What? Duh. She's an 8.5. I'm surprised she didn't say I'm a 10 and you're a 6. She gave herself a rating, the rating system, you know, I'm an 8.5 and you're a 6. Just everything that you claim to hate about men and everything you claim to hate about this guy, you are doing. So I don't know if you're becoming what you hate or if you've always been this way. But lady, get on the off, find an off ramp. But I hate to break it to you. This is the beginning, not far in, and it doesn't really stop. She just never stops, never has any accountability, never says maybe I could have done things differently, never says I couldn't go, shouldn't have gone along with the whole doing things on camera thing, never. The marriage wouldn't have lasted as long as it did. Had I been fully transparent, I was silent to try to protect the feelings of my partner rather than express my truth ah! what the hell i was fully on his side in this thing until he said my truth dude you are your truth is just your opinion i don't know if y'all know this yet but this is one of my pet peeves because it and through the whole thing kevin frazier the girls brennan my truth your truth the truth Ne actually never the truth just my truth your truth <laughs> god dang man this this is the problem is as a society we've become comfortable with instead of acknowledging whatever the truth is acknowledging ourselves and our opinions by saying my truth or your truth when you're talking about someone else. Basically saying there are multiple truths to any situation. What I think is my truth. What you think is your truth. No, 
There's only the truth. One is right, one is wrong. Maybe there's two stories to each, or two sides to each story, but there is only the truth. Now, whether we get to the bottom of it, that's a different question. But people say it like this, this dude, oh my God, dude, it's just, just I, I don't know what the good word is for it. Coward, cowardly man. Never a man should ever say my truth, your truth, whatever. It just be whatever the truth is. So if I could take your man card again, even though I am on your side for a lot of this, dude, you're never getting that man card back. It was that night that I went into Flutter. Mm. And, uh, you know, I... Talking about the breakup after they had broken up, his heart went into Flutter. Since Becca mentioned receipts, I figured I'd uh, bring some receipts and... That's where I was shocked back. Oh, yeah, that's your EKG. Yep, and, and here's here's the shock right here. Where your heart stuck. Yep. So he's showing that his heart, because what they were trying to say is he just left. It was a cop-out. He left. It was all an excuse. What he's saying is it actually wasn't a genetic thing. It wasn't hereditary. And what he was saying was, what they actually were saying was he went into that because of stress, supposedly from the show, a broken heart, if you will. Do I think he really had a broken heart from Claire? No. But stress-induced, and he proves that it actually happened, and he actually has the EKG, great. that That's great. I get it. And no one should be saying I, he did it just to get away. I mean, obviously, that's a hell of an accusation that you, you better come with receipts for, saying he just went in the hospital to get away. Actually, even though they keep claiming that he is the one that orchestrated the whole cover-up or whatever, I don't buy it. I think he mentioned them some things about being on camera. He actually admitted to that. Overall, I think Cameron was a good dude. Things could have been done differently. I think Claire was definitely a puppet master at points, and she is downplaying that. But again, this is just like villain after villain people who should not have been chosen, experts who should have had better opinions, a body language expert who should have been there. Mark my words, if they put a body language expert in there, that was my idea. Listen to these females. Listen to these females. None of these men are men we would have ever given a second glance at. What the? They're, they're hideous inside and out. Wow. You're going to complain about Brennan not saying what he should have said to Emily, which I acknowledge that he should have said, I'm not attracted to you. And you're going to say that we would have never given these men a glance inside and out. Holy crap, Lauren, you piece of human debris. What the hell is wrong with you? Like, pain does not equate to being a bad person. If you hurt you putting it off on someone else should not be the way. I do not buy that this is all because they're hurting. I think that this was, they were these kind of people before, and this just elevated it. Just like Brennan had controlling tendencies, and this thing elevated it. This whole process elevated it and brought it out. But do I also think they really portrayed certain areas and played them up? Absolutely, because it's a TV show. <laughs> of course they did. Innocuous and how they impacted you, it was important for me. So I want to thank you for that. I want to reiterate my apology to you. I never gave us the platform to find a solution. That's a You know what? Good for Michael for acknowledging his issues and, and really coming off as having a heartfelt apology. Of course, then Lauren has insert herself and say, that's what reflection really feels like. Yet she's the same person that you will see later on continues to say, we need to just let stuff go while not letting stuff go. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. Like they're all hypocritical. She is the epitome of not having reflection. And again, she was one. I was on her side. I was completely and still am against Orion. I think he was a douchebag. But yet, why are you coming on the show when you were, you had a rough, you had, you, you drew the short straw, you had a rough go, and yet here you are acting like just a mean girl. That's all they are is just a, a group of mean girls is what it comes off as. It's, it's, it's insane how much it flipped in the second part of the reunion. I want to take responsibility for not expressing my full truth to you. Oh God. And I'm sorry. I should have been much more transparent and expressive in my thoughts. I All right. I appreciate that. Um, I don't really believe you, and I don't really... <laughs> See, it's like, you can't... Like, she just wants to just seethe. Like, now, again, douchebag, I, I just, not expressing my truth. Okay. Your truth... 
listen, I can't express it anymore. Y'all know my feelings on the your truth thing. But her saying, I accept that, but I don't really believe you. I'm like, lady, you, you're you not, I don't know. Maybe you're going to argue you don't care about optics, but then that's fine. But then this is just who you are. And you are going to struggle to find someone that wants to be with you if this is your actual personality. If this comes out when you're a little bit hurt. Or if this is just out, period. And it also makes people think, huh. Maybe Brennan had something about some of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes that no one believed before because you're showing it now. Good Lord. Just to say, for the rest of my life, I will speak my truth. I will live in authenticity. Those two things do not work together. I don't know how to tell you that. Your truth and living in authenticity, your truth is just your opinion. You cannot live in your opinion about the world and also live authentically. It does not work. And yet your advice is live your truth and live in authenticity. Lady, tell the truth, be honest, and be who you are. There you go. Your truth is not a thing. It is something people have created in order to make themselves feel better about not acknowledging whatever the truth is. I, I can't get away from it. I can't get away from it. All we're trying to do is make marriages work. No, you're not. If you were trying to make marriages work, you would be better at matchmaking. You would read through some of this bullcrap. You would know what's going on behind the scenes because you have 27,000 cameras going on. I get it. There are instances where you can be away from the cameras. You can talk. Maybe they're not reading your text messages. I get it. Again, suggestion. Put a body language expert in these interviews. Do that and see some of these cues and red flags right off the bat. So maybe... Maybe Pastor Cal, maybe Dr. Pepper, maybe Pia, social, is she a doctor? I can't remember. Dr. Pia. Maybe they have the best intentions. It's possible because there's a whole production behind it. So the experts who aren't acting like experts could have the best intentions. But it does not come off that way because the people you are choosing are doing all these shady things and are barely working out. So either matchmaking is a crock, which I've said before, or you're not doing the best job you possibly can. It's probably a combination of both. We all then putting the work and reflecting and using this as an opportunity to get better, stronger, and grow. I truly believe that we have put in the work, we pause the TV when we watch the episodes, we take accountability, we reflect. And okay, where is her accountability? Because she claims she takes accountability. What is her accountability? Because she sure as hell hasn't done that. Is she taking accountability for going along with this ruse to act? Is she taking accountability for anything else she might have done? Is she taking accountability for deleting some of the diaries her own self? Is she taking accountability for saying she's basically going to go back to her same life? No. Instead, it's just, I think we take accountability and grow. Where's your growth? Where's your growth, Emily? Because you have your own issues. I'm not, you're, I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm saying that as of right now, you were going about it the wrong way. And you are showing that you were, if not just as much, a good part of it was you. You had this part in this failing of the relationship. That's just true. Your personality, the way you're acting here, is not showing this innocent little delicate flower that just was destroyed by Brennan. Not anymore. If that's the perception you want, great. I don't think it is. There's also a balance between healthy compartmentalization and unhealthy compartmentalization. Yeah. So while I can respect Dr. Pia coming with the knowledge, the desire to like be coming together as a unit to like support one another, I worry about how much that's adding more and more and more fuel. And so I want to uh <laughs> <laughs> Look at Emily's face. Hold on. Look at her. She's pissed because what she's saying is y'all banding together and just, yes, 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 get out there. A couple of them said, go out there. We got to go hard. We got to do that. Said like, like they're going to war in this thing. Let me tell you something about men, typical men who, especially with friends, I don't know about these men because these aren't, haven't been friends for a lifetime. But if you have friends, if you're a man, you have friends who have been your friends for a long time. Typically with men, there's accountability. We typically fight and are able to get up and move on. We typically tell each other when we're doing something wrong. 
Now, we don't go out and advertise that because we don't gossip. We don't do those things. So there's an accountability there with at least this group of females and, you know, the high school mean girl crowd. It's like cheering on to do negative things. It is encouraging to do negative things instead of to grow. They keep talking about growth. They keep talking about, you know, going to therapy and doing better. In reality, they're encouraging each other to go out and be this big, bad B word and show everyone that, you know, they're, they're strong. Okay, I thought y'all were strong before when y'all were dealing with these relationships in this negative way and still trying to make it work. When it was portrayed that way, I thought you were strong then. This is not someone me or anyone I've ever known would want to be with. This is not someone that men look at and say, man, that girl right there, except for someone who saw her on TV and said, I might get my five seconds of fame. It just isn't. This is not good. And she points it out that, you know, oh, this whole coming together, trying to say it in a nice way, like you're talking about growth, but y'all coming together in this support. Okay, maybe it's not the best thing when you need to grow yourself. And clearly, Emily isn't happy with that. Sorry, I, I kind of blacked out there. I don't know if I apologize. I was trying to apologize. I, I, I received it. But I, I know I, I lied to your face, Dr. Pepper. And if I did it to you, you guys as well, I'm sorry if I don't have as clear of a memory of it, but... You know what? Good for him. So this was basically him taking accountability for his role in orchestrating them to portray a certain way on camera. One that Claire went along with and kept saying, oh, I was intimidated. What are you going to do? Claire, the puppet master all along, at least he's taking accountability. This is what I was talking about, where at numerous points in the show, you see the men taking accountability. The women never do for a thing. And that's a problem. It does not show someone who's ready for a relationship. I don't think any of them are ready, but at least if you're showing accountability, maybe you have room to grow. I am not confident in the women in this because it was just an attack session for them. And it just wasn't good. It just wasn't good. And I take full responsibility for that. I don't think I gave you a fair chance at letting you help us. And I do sincerely apologize for that. Brennan, I... Again, Brennan showing accountability. You can argue it's not sincere. I think overall, at least to a good portion of it, it was. He's saying, I felt backed in a corner there, and I, I was controlling. That was when he was like trying to talk over Emily and all that thing, and I pointed that out at the time, and I still think it was controlling. I still think he's got a lot to work on, but at least he's saying, I'm sorry, I, I made it. I'm trying to make accountability, or I'm trying to take accountability, and I sincerely apologize. Maybe he's doing it for the cameras just for that as well, but at least he's doing that part of it. Good for him. I hope it's sincere because being a control freak of a person who wants to control how someone is talking is not a good thing. But also being a person who just wants to trash their the person they're with or was with all the time is not good. I mean, Brennan said at one point he's with someone else because they always ask, oh, are you with someone? He said, yes, I'm dating someone that's going very well. Emily said, I wish I could find that person to tell them what kind of person you really are. That is vengeful. That is vindictive. That's getting to a, a level of, I don't want to go so far to say evil, but a level of vitriol that is not usually reserved for just a normal everyday person. It's usually reserved for someone who is like a sociopath or a narcissist or maybe someone with like a borderline personality disorder. That's very possible. And that is scary that that's where she went with it. Cameron said you wanted to my best friend at both Austin You just admitted before that that rumor was clearly not true. Doesn't matter. Uh -oh. ah! <laughs> you just admitted it's not true. Doesn't matter. That's the excuse. Doesn't matter. It absolutely matters. He said, you just admitted that wasn't true, that I wanted to F your best friend, have sex with your best friend, and then she says, doesn't matter. Are you serious right now? If that doesn't tell you that she is not the person that was portrayed on TV, that it doesn't matter that you admitted that that didn't happen. So basically, it's okay if I lie about you, but when you do something bad, it's really bad. That is awful. I mean, that is that same thing I was just talking about, that level of sociopathy or narcissism or borderline personality disorder. I mean, there is some craziness in that statement that you would be willing to say, I don't care what the truth is, that I'm still just going to put it out there, knowing that that wasn't true and it was a rumor. Unbelievable. The filming. Look, this is separate, Cameron. You can look bewildered all you want. That's <laughs> 
don't fly with me. You're trying to- She is trying to insert herself into this drama. To equate the pact that you all made to us deciding our husbands suck, our husbands were manipulative, let's wear pink in protest of them. Okay, the pact they made that y'all agreed to that no one exist, no one said that didn't happen or we didn't go along with. No, instead you said we were afraid. Since when? Y'all are very outspoken. And then you say, don't do that with me. And not only that, does she go on to say, uh, you know, you keep poking the bear. What are you going to do? You cowered down to Orion when he made the stupid comparison about Redskin, saying, how dare you, even though it was clearly a joke. I was in your corner. Instead, now you're acting like, don't poke the bear, or what? His, pro his proper response should have been, poke. Poke, 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 poke. Where are you gonna, what are you going to do? you going to turn this into Jerry Springer and run across the stage and beat him up? <laughs> what the hell are you going to do? You guys, you've already been seen out and someone has recognized you. Um, what is that like, being out now and people recognizing you? I forget that I'm on a TV show and mm -hmm. I'm just always wondering why do you know my name? But so many people watch this show and this is True. a selfish thing to say, but it just makes me feel good that I'm always um, so kind in public. What? <laughs> Why are these females so cocky? It just makes me so happy that I'm just the nicest person ever. Everyone says I'm the nicest person. Like, so just like showing humanity? I mean, you're highlighting that you like it, that you're very, very, very nice. I mean, you know, talking about, oh, we're a 10. Oh, we're the bad B words. Oh, we're this, oh, we're that. You know, my God, is this just to build themselves up? Because it is a whole lot of cocky. I have never seen that much ego in a room full of men. And, you know, we typically have egos, you know. It, it just is what it is on some level, some worse than others. But this crap is crazy. You know, never do I go around talking myself up. It, it just don't. And then yet y'all, it's like, oh, you know, Emily, I'm an 8.5. You're like a 6. Who wouldn't want to kiss me? Like, I'm just the nicest person. What is that crap? This this has been such a cluster of a season. The fact is, is no one learned anything. No one really grew. No one is going to grow from it. Whatever the next rebound relationships, any of them, men or women have, are going to fail. And it is disastrous. But... It's over, and it was glorious in its train wreck appeal. I hopefully next season they will do a little bit better with the matchmaking. Hopefully they'll take my advice, which you know I doubt they will, and put a body language expert in the interviews. We will see. Next week we have going into, where are they now? What are they doing? It's great. And whenever the Chicago season starts, which I'm not sure when it's going to actually start, we're doing it from the beginning. So we didn't do this one from the beginning. It started kind of in the middle of the season. We're going to do it from the beginning. We'll get to the point of the live show, and then we're going to start doing the live show. So it's going to be a fun season when that happens, probably in a couple months. I'm not sure exactly when. In the meantime, we have the Where Are They Now. I'll be putting out some more videos. I appreciate the support. Make sure if you want to support the channel, you can join. You can also do super thanks. I appreciate any support. But at the very least, comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications. All of it is much appreciated. I do not take it for granted. I love the growth. I love that we can continue to grow together and do this and, and just <laughs> talk about the madness that is these shows. Thank you so much for your support, and I will see y'all next time.